My name is Dan Hunter and welcome to my tutorial Mousetrap Game in Game Maker. This is video one. So starting off, I'm going to start off with a brand new project called Mousetrap. Now for this, I've got my design document out in front of me and this tells me what I need to make. So I've got a number of objects, but before I make the objects, I am going to create the sprites. I give every sprite the prefix SPR and then underscore the name. So here I'm doing SPR underscore mouse. Every sprite I create will have that prefix and it just means it's a lot easier when coding to switch between objects and sprites and perhaps you'll see that later. Now I'm going to use the image editor just to create simple rudimentary graphics. So here I am creating an ear using the circle tool, using the selection tool to move that ear where I want it, copy and paste and make another ear. While I make this, let's just talk about the image editor. Image editor is okay in Game Maker. Uh, it doesn't have some of the functionality like Photoshop or Paint.net or even GIMP has. You don't have layers, you don't have some really good tools, but if you want really rough and ready graphics, just placeholder graphics like this, it, it it's fairly decent. You've got the shapes that you can see I'm using now, you can see I'm using um, the line tools, uh, the fill tools and, and the colour pickers. So trying to get an eye right, uh, use the selection tool to move that on top. It's destructive so there are no layers in this, so if you overdraw a, another pixel, the pixels underneath uh, are, are gone. Thank you, got a pop-up from Avira, which is some kind of, I don't know, protection software informing me that I get a loyalty discount. Let's continue making my mouse. There you go, that mouse looks vaguely familiar, not at all influenced by a, any mouse cartoon characters. So let's give this chap, oh, it could be a girl, um, uh, a man, a nose, uh, let's give it some teeth. There you go. And I've got a simple cartoon mouse head, so that'll do for now. So I'm happy with that, clicking on the green teeth. Just going to center it, and now uh, duplicate that mouse. My design document tells me I need a cat, and I could uh, just draw it from scratch, but uh, I'm going to make SPR underscore cat based on the mouse, because I've got a lot of the framework already. So just zooming in here, the ears are very much mousy ears. So let's use the line tool and cheat and make them a bit more cat-like. There you go. Brilliant. Okay, let's use the fill tool. Looks a bit like now a heart, but that'll do. And to totally distinguish it, let's just invert the colours. So let's make it like a witch's familiar. Let's make it a black cat. So perhaps we're in a witch's house. I don't know. Let's give this cat uh, a nose, so let's change the colour. There we go. Yep, masterpiece. And uh, let's give it some whiskers. There you go, definitely looking like a, a cat. You can see the preview in the bottom right hand corner just above that pop up. And you can see, yeah, it, it'll do. You can tell that it's definitely not the mouse. So it's a prototype, that'll do. So let's click on OK. Alright, looking at my design documents, what other sprites do I need? Let's make SPR underscore wall. This is a maze game, so I need a barrier, walls for the mouse to uh, run around. And uh, quite simple, I'm going to use a square tool for this, the polygon tool, to actually draw a wall. It's going to be a nice simple block, so let's rudimentary, just click and drag and draw me a square. So down and across. That's roughly right. No, in and up a bit. There we go. And now let's add some lines coming in from the corner to give it the appearance if you're looking down at it. It's like a 3D block. 
Now a white block is uh, a bit plain, a bit rubbish, so we're going to add some colour. So I'm going to choose a red colour. I'm going to show you a nice little neat trick here. I'm going to use a darker red for the bottom and the left quadrants, like so. I'm going to use a lighter red for the top right. It gives the uh, appearance of a 3D block. Fairly simple, looks quite neat, so that'll do. Now the next sprite I need is mice like cheese. So I'm going to make cheese. The cheese is going to be the pickup of this game. The mouse is going to pick up the cheese, gain points for doing it, whilst avoiding the witch's cat. So again, zooming in. Use a line tool. For some reason I've got pink selected here. So yeah, let's just undo that. Control Z. Black lines, and let's make a piece of cheese. There we go. And up. Let's add a bit of a 3D. There we go. Cheese is generally yellow. So let's fill it up. There you go. And uh, missed a bit. And all cartoon cheeses have holes in it, so let's use the ellipse tool. Uh, different colour, yellow. Yeah, that'll do. Let's put some holes in our cheese. That's looking very cheesy indeed. There you go. Brilliant. As a placeholder, made it in minutes. That's good. You could, of course, find some images online as long as they're royalty free, or spend some time, like I said, using image editing software and make some really nice pixel art. Okay, now I've got the images. I'm going to create an object. Right click, create object. All these objects are given the prefix OBJ. This is a wall, so I'm selecting the sprite wall and I'm going to make it solid. At the moment, uh, that's all I'm going to do. Now, let's create an object. And OBJ, giving it the prefix to explain objects and sprites, this is going to be the player. I'm going to use the sprite mouse. And now I'm going to add some events. So the first event I want is collision. What happens when this mouse collides with an object? OBJ wall. And what I'm going to do is use this move option, set the direction to stop and the speed to zero. So the moment it hits the wall, it stops. Now I'm going to add another event, and this is a keyboard event for left. I want the mouse to go left. So again, using the same drag-drop interface, move fixed, I'm selecting the direction of left and applying the speed. I'm going to do one for each of the cursor keys. So that's left, right, up and down. The speed I'm typing there is 8 each time. Now Game Maker is really good because you can use the drag and drop interface to add uh, common features of video games. So in this case collision detection, in this case movement. You can code these things and, and you definitely get more out of it coding but for quick down and dirty prototyping, you know, why reinvent the wheel when there's a whole host of tools available here. So left, up, down and right. Right, another object, uh, obj underscore cat. The sprite I'm going to use is obviously spr cat, and that's it. That's all for the cat. I will come back to the cat later. All right, looking at the objects I've got to create, this is obj, and this is going to be cheese. So again, select the sprite for cheese. And add event, collision. When the player collides with the cheese, what do I want to happen? Well, at this moment, I just want the cheese to disappear. So I'm using destroy instance and self. So I'm clicking on OK. So I've got my objects. I've got my sprites. Now I need a place to put them in. This is a room. So I'm going to call this room sandbox. Just a, a testing room, if I could spell. And I'm using the objects panel here to apply some walls. Now I'm going to scroll down and just show you some shortcut keys here. Uh, you can see that... Uh, Shift and Control will now add lots of walls. So if I click and drag whilst holding Shift and Control down, I can create a border of wall pieces. There I go, going down and across. If you just click automatically, it just creates one instance of the wall. Since I'm making loads, just click and drag whilst pressing Shift and Control. So I've got a border, and now I'm going to make like an interior section for the mouse to run around. Now I'm not worried about design. The sandbox is just to test the mechanics of the game. 
Right, so there we go, two areas to run around. I'm going to change the object now to an instance of the player. So click, there's the player. And I'm going to put some objects of cheese down. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Now I'm good with that, so I've created a nice simple room. Click on the green tick, and I'm good. Just going to save it for prosperity, and then let's run and test this game. So hopefully, if it all works, I'll get a room. I'll get a mouse that's easily controlled. There we go. Look, there's me moving it. Yay, look, it's working. Uh, I'm bumping into walls, and look, when I hit the cheese, the cheese is disappearing. Destroyed instances, that's it. There's an issue here I'm not happy with. If I just press up and let go of it, the mouse will continue to move up until it hits a wall. If I press left and let go of the keyboard, the mouse will continue to move. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a change here. I'm going to save this now as Mousetrap01. So I've got a version to always go back to. And uh, I'm just going to add a new uh, event here. Add event, keyboard, and no keys. What happens if no keys are pressed? Well, I want the mouse to stop. So again, I use the move fix, press stop, and the speed. Click on OK. And let's test it again. So there you go, just pressing down, but if I hold it down, the mouse will move. If I let go of the keyboard, the mouse stops. It's really down to you what you select there in terms of movements, mechanics, the feel. But you can see we've got the basic prototype of a game up and running in, oh, 11 minutes and 25. My name's Dan Hunter. Hope you've enjoyed.